2022 Hyundai Venue. Far away from car culture exists a directionless flock of consumers, aimless like returning songbirds on an early spring morning. They don't read technical service bulletins. They don't Google the name of a prospective car followed by the words, known issues. They don't visit an independent mechanic and ask what usually needs to be repaired on such and such car. These fluttering consumers dance from lot to lot looking for succulent berries and nuts, selecting them by outward appearance only. I don't know much about cars, they sing from branches and wine bars. I don't know a lot about cars. I don't know I what don't I know want. I don't about even cars. like cars. I don't know I don't much know about, cars. about cars. I know what I want. I don't know I don't, a lot I don't about, about cars. I don't know a lot about cars. Hyundai's engines have problems, but those problems aren't hurting their sales. Hyundai recalled 1.7 million vehicles from 2015 to 2017, and then again from 2011 to 2019, all with GDI, gasoline direct injected engines specifically the Theta-2 GDI engine. Those engines are spinning crank bearings, gargling metal shavings in their oil. The crankshafts still had metal burrs on them, so okay, the metal burrs wear off and then they clog the oil passages and now your engine is starved for oil and critical components and there, there it goes. So there was this class action lawsuit against Hyundai and consumers got new engines. But of course, there's a backlog and until you get your car's engine replaced, you're SOL unless your local dealership has a fleet of loaners. But this USDM venue doesn't use a GDI engine. It uses the 1.6 liter SmartStream port fuel injected engine. Now, the G4 FM SmartStream engine isn't flawless though. The valve cover gasket will start seeping oil at around 40,000 miles. The PCV valves go bad and catalytic converters will clog themselves. But no spun bearings. The G4 FM 1.6 liter makes a hungover 121 horsepower at 6,300 RPM and a moody teenager 114 pound-feet of torque at 4,500 RPM. A Honda Fit will outrun a Hyundai Venue. Haul more cargo, is better made, and more fun. The Venue will be more comfortable than a Fit. The seats have bolstering but no lumbar support. The interior is roomier, and being a modern car, the venue has wireless Apple CarPlay. And check out the front grille. Most of this grille is for show. You don't need a, a, a wide, big grille here, so it's all filled in, except for the maybe toaster oven-sized area where your AC condenser and radiator sits behind. This is like late 90s Civics. They had a little radiator, but it's just off to the side with a cute little fan. That's all it needs. But because buying a small car shouldn't look like a small car, you gotta have a big grill. So most of this grill is fake. Hyundai Venue, a car that gives off all the energy of a guy who wants to be in the NBA but was born short. It's the rare car that gets smaller the closer you get to it. It wants to be modern, but it wasn't budgeted for that. You can theoretically go fast, but the venue is going to complain the entire time, like a kid being forced to try on a pair of pants. I don't wanna! You already know my size! Why do I gotta try it on? I wanna go home! It's gonna be night before we get home and everybody's gonna be inside! You have to try them on because some brands run large. Now turn around so I can see what they look like. Yeah, we're going to need a belt. Let's go look at belts. No! Hyundai Venue. On one hand, you do get modern safety features like forward collision avoidance assistance, blind spot warning, and rear cross-traffic collision warning. But... The nanny-like whine of the lane-keeping will drive you nuts until you turn it off. You feel resistance in the steering wheel trying to force you back to where you need to be. It creates this tension between you and the car that can be hard to reconcile when you aren't expecting it. And the fact is that it's missing a lot of the creature comforts that are supposed to make a subcompact like this appealing. No keyless start, no auto tailgate. You're basically driving a taller Korean Corolla. And even in sport mode, there's no real kick down, just the sound of stress being placed on an engine that can't handle these kind of demands. This car is a guy lying about knowing how to ski and then hitting a green circle and breaking both legs trying to make a wedge turn. And while the transmission is the standard intelligent variable transmission that comes with the SEL trim, 
It's basically just a seven fake speed CVT, which is at least better than whatever a Hyundai thinks a clutchless manual is. But all told, the handling is exactly as undynamic as you think. In that way, the venue makes a great argument for judging a book by its cover. This is as underpowered and bland as the car from driving school. All it's missing is a student driver bumper sticker. And if you're looking for a manual, don't bother. They stopped making them in 2021 for the same reason that everybody stopped bothering with manuals. No one was buying them in enough numbers to justify the tooling. But hey, whatever. It's cheap, it's cute. And in that sense, Hyundai's design philosophy is perfectly aligned with who this car is meant to appeal to. Let's talk about the 1930s. When everybody was going through the Great Depression, car design got more hopeful. Aspirational design cues inspired the hope for a better future, more futuristic and fancy, more curvy, less boxy and angular, like the Model Ts of before. It gave people something to strive towards. This peaked in the early 1960s where everything was a jet. Taillights were afterburners. But by the late 60s, our president was assassinated, the whole country was thrown into turmoil, there was a war that just wouldn't end, car design got more cynical, more brutal, hard lines for hard times. But by the 80s and 90s, automakers were steering into the skids of modernism. We're going to force the future and it's coming back giving way to the notion that a car is the only social signifier worth a damn. Because you can lie about your job, but you can't pretend to drive a Bentley when you've been credibly accused of driving a Pinto. By the late 2000s and 2010, the melted bar of soaps kind of got some fins back, some little accents. It was a bland sort of futurism that let us feel like we were living in the smooth, seamless Star Trek age we were promised decades ago but without challenging our notions of what a comfortable small car should be. And so we come to today, the 2020s, where the biggest risks being taken involve turning long-running models electric and rolling out new models in a cycle of constant refresh and renewal. The era of automotive churn. We're already on to the next thing. Not even the next big thing, just the next thing. Before the thing we're currently on has a chance to settle. Forced obsolescence makes consumers less likely to take risks or wanting anything more than what's already in front of them. Because who needs performance when you're getting 29 city and 33 highway and a combined 31 miles per gallon? Big yawn, the 90s are over, 50 miles per gallon and cars are never coming back. The Hyundai venue appeals to people who are less demanding about their cars while simultaneously seeming to exist for no other reason than to be mocked by the lefty Rinkowskis of the world. <sighs> Hyundai venue. <sighs> more like... Hyundai Ionic nothing, Hyundai Venue, more like Honda shit, Hyundai Venue, huh? more like Chevy Astro bland, Hyundai Venue, huh? more like Toyota RAV poor, Hyundai Venue, more like Jeep Sediator because the cooch was bad. <laughs> Shut up, lefty. The Hyundai Venue sucks. But at least we can kind of understand why people would buy one. All right, it's not going to spin its bearings. It's not going to explode. But the only really thing it has going for it is it's cheap and it looks nice. Even if it's a case of paying a lot of money for not a whole lot of car. I want to root for a car like this, something affordable and low maintenance that provides at least some of the benefits of a modern car even if it falls short in a lot of departments. But the Hyundai Venue makes it hard to root for it because there's nothing new about this design, but it doesn't feel like there's any heart and soul inside of it. I mean, I wasn't expecting much, and I'm still disappointed. This is the automotive equivalent of thinking you found a parking spot, only to discover a small car parked deep. It's the joy of finding a great spot, the third leaving your balls bluer than the demo liquid in a tampon commercial. The venue looks like it's trying to be an SUV, and in an empty parking lot from a distance, it looks like one. But like the husband you've been with since high school, the venue shrinks the minute you have something else to compare it to. What you end up with is the safest possible choice that appeals to the largest demographic of people who clap on the one and three. Brian, say something nice about this. Well, the seats are nice. They have stripes on them. Hyundai Venue, for the people who drink yellowtail wine and feel fancy. For tasty cake girlfriends who magic wand themselves to a photo of 2004-era Rob Thomas. For people who fly Frontier and complain about Frontier. Look, I know this is a Dave Ramsey structure rant, but who buys an entry-level car new? It's the most amount of money you can possibly pay for the least amount of car. 
Ooh. Wireless Apple CarPlay. Ooh. And a $1,000 repair bill at 40,000 miles for a new valve cover gasket. The move is to buy one of these at 35,000 miles and use the technical service bulletin to negotiate down $1,000. Or buy one at 45,000 miles after the valve cover gasket was replaced, but only if they have written proof from a mechanic. This is like the Subaru EJ2500,000 mile head gasket rumba dance. And if I see any of you with venues posting a crowdfunding campaign for emergency car repairs, I'm gonna be disappointed. Because I'm telling you now what to expect. Hyundai Venue. The official car of ignoring your smoke detector's low battery beep. If you need an app to get you to not spend money on bric-a-brac, here's your ride. I remember when I was a teacher. There were some students who felt pain when asked to read. Not read aloud, just read. Reading hurt them. They winced and squirmed in their seat when faced with an open novel. Horrible written words with multiple meanings and motifs. A, a motif is different than a theme, but both use imagery and they feel bad because reading makes them feel dumb. There are people for whom car research is painful. Engine designations and customer service bulletins and technical service bulletins and recalls and planning for maintenance and learning about cars makes them feel bad and they just want to feel good. They want to be sold a product that looks like happiness. They want to be told that the car they bought is fine, is good, that they're a good person. They want to be told that this is a new car and it's not going to break and it'll be reliable. But no car is. But what Hyundai did was exactly that. And as much as I don't want to admit it, NPC dollars are greener than car enthusiast dollars because they'll pay without a fuss. And if they're happy in their narrow view, they'll come back again and pay sticker.